I'm recording now. So, Ra- so Raja, I want to get you back on the phone because there's one thing that I forgot to talk to you about that's insane, and I'm not sure how long you've been collecting for, but you have like a really big record collection. Yeah, I mean, I've got a lot of records. Obviously, I was lucky enough to be there and and be in a band. Yeah. When everything was happening, you know, like because yeah. I mean, there was nothing better than going on tour and playing with all these great bands and then picking up records all along everybody be like hey check out my record check out my record check out my record yeah so i've i've even got records i've never even played you know it's pretty amazing because you know i I either had it on on cassette from a friend or something and it just you know they just like you know you get it too you know people give you demos and stuff like that it just accumulates you know yeah so the thing with me was that was a huge benefit, you know, of course, being in a band and meeting all these people going on our first tour and meeting all these bands and, yeah. you know, you end up with stuff. And then the other beauty about it is just living in New York City. You know, mm-hmm. I remember it was, it was a time when I had three of those Bad Brains pay to come first press, you know? Damn. So, and like, I wish I still had them all. <laughs> I have one, of course, but. I traded the other two or something like that. Yeah. But you know, it was a time and a place. The same thing with the misfit stuff. I mean, being in New York city, it was everywhere. All the classic New York hardcore bands, all the, the pre, you know, New York hardcore stuff, the classic punk stuff, like, you know, the blessed stimulators. Yeah. Uh, Chaparral, all those great bands that I, I always loved, you know? Yeah. And, and I think to me, it was just, you know, that's what that was. It wasn't about record collecting. It was more about like, just I love the music. It was I was an enthusiast. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. This is everything I, I I wanted to go home and just put on the record. You know, listen to it because that that made me who I was. You know. Yeah. At the time, it just really fed my fire. You know, and and you couldn't get it on the radio unless you were listening to like Noise a Show mm-hmm. or something like that. Every once in a you know, once every week or two, we went in and played. Or, you know. Yeah. But it, it was like the hunger was real. The strive was real. The only way to find out about music was your local record shops, you know, going to, you know, 171A or, or the Rack, or Rack Cage Records and yeah. and having Dave play songs for you, your Venus Records, and having them, you know, can I hear this? And they'll play, and like, wow, you know? Yeah. It was, it was just always, it was always great, you know? And, and I just loved it, you know? So Yeah. Did you lose some? Now, did you lose some in your travels and you're moving around in your life? Oh yeah, I mean, my biggest loss was it was in a fire I had in one of my squats. And till this date, because of that loss, uh, I I lost a lot of cool paper, cool stuff. And you know, I had stuff that were flyers and shit too, probably. Awesome, right? yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I I got this uh, three hits posters, three hits from hell. It's a Misfits poster that I remember Glenn pasting them on Avenue A. Wow. He was in a shopping, he was in a shopping cart, and that we paste, and he was just we, me and Jimmy. Jimmy Jimmy G were getting out of uh, A7 Club. It was like 6.30 in the morning, something like that. We're bombed <laughs> or whatever, you know? And there's Glenn pasting, like, posters and stuff like that. Holy and, shit, and doing it himself. Gave us, you know, just, hey, you go, yeah, he did it himself. And, wow. And, um, that's how it was, man. We did everything ourselves. Yeah. You know, we would do the same thing. When it was a show, you know, we'd just, we, we, we'd get the van, the AF van, we loaded up with all kind, all little posters, whatever we made, flyers, whatever, and we paste and just hit hit the pump prime spots outside yeah. of CBGBs, outside of the Eight Seven Club, outside of all the venues. Yeah, you know, on St. Marks, you know, you had your spots and you hit the record store walls. There's, there was there was spots and of yeah. course flyering. And speaking of that, because of those reasons alone, I have a bunch of awesome flyers too. You know. Yeah, I've seen some of the ones you text that, me. They're crazy, man. Yeah, you know, I just always love looking at the art and everything. Like, so I don't get this downloading stuff, you know. I mean, it is what it is today, but there's nothing like seeing the whole package to, that is presented to you. Like, even even the flyers are so amazing, so unique. You know, you yeah. get the record, then you look at the, the imagery. You're trying to see what the, what the band's kind of presenting. Then you look at the thanks. Yeah, that's what they're shouting to, out. You know, right, yeah. you see the shout out, then you want to look up those bands and yeah. hear those bands. And then it just, it was our net, our, our way of networking. We didn't have the internet. You we know? didn't. So that was it, you know? Yeah. That's how you so found out about shit. Right. So then that's how I managed to build up my record stuff. And I remember that, that fire that I did have in that squad, that was the one I really changed a lot of the way I, I keep things, even till date. Um, 
a buddy of mine, No Echo, no that No Echo's website is doing a, a, a record collecting type of thing with me too. Yeah. Uh, here actually today, which is really weird. He's coming flying in later. But um What are you keeping track of everything this, you have, you mean? I keep track of everything I have and I keep it in three different places because I'm paranoid. Okay. Because <laughs> yeah. um, what what really saved a lot of the stuff that I have today was the fact that I kept like I had a one wall full of stuff and then I had the opposite wall with, with my with my you know with my record player and, yeah. my, and my amp and stuff and and if it wasn't for that if I had everything together, I would have lost everything. Mm-hmm. So I lost one wall, and I say save the other wall. So I'm wow. so paranoid; I can't keep it all together. I have to keep like there's some in this storage over here. I got some in my in, in the really high and pretty pricey, crazy expensive stuff mm-hmm. like the Necros Sex uh, uh, Sex Drive Seven Inch or Misfit Cough Cool Damn. or Bad Brains Spirit. Cream. All that stuff I got in a certain locked up area. Then I got my then I got the rest of the stuff in like my listening room with all my posters hanging up and stuff and wow you know it's just it's just that I'm I'm you know I, unfortunately I went through that you know and, and I know what it feels like and and you know what was weird what was crazy about it is back then I didn't think about it after that I figured I was still getting a bunch of records and stuff for free I didn't think of anything about going out and replacing anything I had even though everything was always available whether at Bleaker Bob's Venus or or somewhere, you know, eight, you know I, I, at that time, Rat Cage was already closed. Yeah. So I never, I never thought to like go and find stuff I didn't have. I figured it would just come to me. Fast forward to like, you know, go into like the 2000s when everything starts going nuts, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, there's some the right resurgence. Probably, yeah. Right. There's some stuff I'll probably never get again. I'll yeah. never have again, you know? But that's all right. I still got my mind. I still got my memory. Yeah. Uh, I still, you lived it. Yeah, I still have a way of listening to stuff, but there, there's, you know, you know, to me, everything I have is stuff I listen to. I went through a period where, like, I had like two or three of them, almost everything New York hardcore related because I always had something I, I played something that well, was my backup. Yeah, you know, records after a while playing them so much and we played the shit out of them. Yeah, they they did the grooves. Everything gets messed up, you know. Mm-hmm. They scratch up. They start getting beat up, you know. Pile them on and stuff. That's back then. We didn't really take care of them like the way I take care of them today. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, I I I just do a little bit more than I used to back then. Yeah. But anyway, um, you know, so I so then I went through a period of about like maybe like five six years ago. I started just getting rid of my doubles, you know, because I don't need doubles, you know? Yeah. Why should I have? And then with the, the while I get rid of my doubles, some of them were pretty classic doubles. I was able to, to pick up stuff that I that I had lost in a fire yeah, or something. Yeah. So it made up for it, but, you know, it's crazy. Like, I mean, like, these records are out of control. I yeah. mean, even my own record, even United Blood is, is something that easily goes over 2,000. Damn. Easily, you know? I heard the Judge uh, Chung King and Suck it was the most expensive one sold or something. Yeah. It was, it, 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 it is till date, you know, Damn. it's probably one of the prices one and it set, definitely set some kind of a, a bar thing on that. Yeah. But yeah. you know, what sucks about that is that the people that have it, you know, prior to with that crazy price where it's sold for, yeah. you know, you could, you could have got it anywhere to 300 bucks, whatever, you know, yeah. whatever. same thing with United Blood, you know, but then once one hits that, then, then it just ruins it for everything. And it's always one person that can afford something like yeah. that then everybody else is like either they sit they, they think they're sitting on gold yeah or um you know it just ruins the fun of someone else having it yeah did you do you, you have the uh, minor threat seven inch yeah i i do I actually all, of them all, all the color sleeves wow i did I, I wasn't really into like collecting all the different color sleeves or nothing i didn't even notice I did. I was. I was missing a yellow, <laughs> and and it was really weird. I didn't know. I was just bought, buying them, you know, here and there, yeah, like the stores or just whatever. And then one day, I'm from my birthday about like maybe five years ago. I'm like, I didn't even know I was missing the yellow or whatever. And I was, oh, yeah. I'm missing a yellow. You know, uh, it's my birthday. My wife said I could have anything I want. So, <laughs> and, and somebody helped me find the yellow. It was awesome. Damn. And, do you obsess and on it now? Time, are you OCD on it now? Like, kind of like getting every color and are you like... Well, not... Oh, oh, the only bands I ever got really crazy in OCD, I was my own band. Yeah. For example. And yeah. I had, and it was a valid reason for it. I've got everything from the real so you got blood forward. That's crazy, man. There's actually... I actually own... And these are not including CDs. 
I actually own 281 different variants of agnostic front. Holy and what I mean shit. by that is like there's 32 different victim and pains. Some of them are fish or some of the bootlegs. I even got the bootlegs because Holy shit. that's the only bet. I don't really support bootlegs. I don't like bootlegs, but it's my own bet. Yeah. I only wish <laughs> people would send me one. You're like, why do yeah. you make me go out and buy my own record like that? You know? Are there a lot of you bootlegs? Know? There's a lot of AF bootlegs, right? Oh shit, Victim and Pain is insane. So is United Blood bootlegs. Damn. Those two are mainly the main big bootlegs. Yeah. But then, like, for example, like when it comes to variants and stuff, I, I am pretty big on, like, I think I got everything Misfits related LP except for a pink legacy of brutality. Wow. And I got everything Misfit related seven inch, except for like the really tough finds, like your, your uh, black horror business and mm-hmm. stuff like that. You know, those, those are, I don't think, or, or a real true evil live three pack, you know. Yeah. But still, some of the stuff I have is mind blowing, and, and I mean, in the thousands, you know. Yeah, it's, it's how, just cool. Yeah, how like, big is your favorite, collection? My, uh, I, I would miss it. I would say it's over a hundred easily. Damn. Um, minor threat being my next favorite. There's a, there's a good thirty minor threat different variations, variations of all the you know. Of course, the fillers and yeah, and uh, out of step and all that stuff. You know what I mean? Wow! Um, I like just like all the different variants, and it wasn't crazy. It was easy to find here and there. Mm-hmm. Uh, after that, I mean, after those are probably my favorite bands right there. I just mentioned Mrs. Yeah. Minor Threats right there. Yeah, AF awesome. Mrs. Minor Threats, and what would be now? I mean, I have all, like all the X Claim stuff because I, I've always loved you know SSD, all the bands yeah. pretty much. FU's, yeah. Jerry's Kids, all. All the bands on, on, on X Claim. I have a lot of the Mother record stuff, and mostly because we played with a lot of those bands. They were yeah. friends of us. They were our neighbors. They're in Jersey, you know. Yeah. And a lot of that stuff was handed to me, so we're kind of lucky with that. Yeah. And I love all that stuff. It's just I've always loved Mother the Mother label stuff. I don't know why. I just like I love their logo on the record. Too. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I like I like the imagery of it. It was yeah. always really cool. Which, and they which, were, you know. Which your prize possession, like your like your baby, like your record that's like the golden ticket or I don't know, just your favorite. Well, I, of course I love the Misfits Cough Cool okay. seven inch, which they're first. But yeah. I also I also have a that I love too is that Necro Sex Drive, you know, which is very rare too. Yeah. There's only I think there was only a hundred made. Damn. And uh and the Bad Brains pay to come, of course. I, I mean there's so many. Uh <laughs> those are those are pricier ones, but I love Urban Waste, you know. I mean, yeah. I've got all the variants of Urban Waste. I, I love all the New York Harco Banks, Abuse, No Thanks. Um, you know, just, you know, Stimulators I love. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of really great stuff. And I, most most of my stuff is obviously related within the the tri-state area, you know what I mean? Like yeah. all the Connecticut stuff, the Jersey stuff, and yeah. AOD, and Bedlam, and all the really people I grew up with, and you know, we either were hey, Roger, here's my new record, whatever, you know, cool. And, and you know, we traded records, whatever, at shows, yeah. whatever. And then being going on tour was where I got the opportunity to pick up, you know, your Infest and and all the really cool shit, you know. Yeah. I was out in California at the time, Uniform Choice. I had yeah, great, great Uniform Choice, which is pretty rare, that Grace World one. Um, I was Screaming for Change, just... that album. Say it again? Was it Screaming for Change album, you mean? No, um... Album? Yeah, Screaming for Change. Yeah, yeah, great album. Yeah, all the all the cool and stuff. So these I was friends with all these guys, and they just you know when I meet up with them, hey Roger, and nobody was thinking, oh here's, I'm sure Pat wasn't thinking, here I'm gonna give you the rear gray one. He just <laughs> went in there and gave me the one he had. Yeah, it just happened to be the gray, which was really cool. Yeah, you know, and it wasn't like that. Nobody was like, oh here I'm gonna give you this rear one because every to to us it was here's a here's a. Here's a record. Some of us like doing color vinyl. Some of us, some of us didn't. I never thought about ever doing anything in color vinyl. Mm-hmm. It was just a record. It's black. I guess here you go. You know, but nobody yeah. cared. You know, back then especially, yeah. Yeah. What about test but, pressings? Uh, oh, when it comes to test press, I'm not really a big collector of test presses because, I, like I said, I love the art and I love everything around it. Yeah. So sometimes eh, it's a little bummer test press. I do, I do have a couple of test pressings i have some government issue ones of course oh yeah nice government issue yeah i inherited those but the only test presses i really collect are all af ones nice and so i have the victim and pain original test press i have the victim of pain acetate i have the united blood yeah. acetate i have the united blood reels 
And just that alone, moving forward, you can just imagine Dude. everything else I have when it comes to AF related. I yeah. have to take all the test pressings till I don't have a, which I don't even know if it exists. I've been trying to find out uh, live at CBGB's one exists or that'd be sick, man. Like that. I don't, I don't know. I was, like I said, I was locked up during that time. I know who know? put that one out with label. <laughs> it was in effect, you know, once yeah. we signed to Combat Core, it was really all the same label. They're yeah. Just, they signed us, and 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 when it was combat, and then they they made they just they they made combat core for us because they didn't know what to do with us, and then they then they got the exploited a bunch of bands, uh, uh that band from the accused from Seattle, oh yeah, you know? and they yeah. got a bunch of bands, and then then it became in effect, and they got sick of it all, yeah man, I that. raw deal. I think they even picked up that bad Brains eye against I, I think if I remember, I think you're right too. Uh, even, even at Madball Seven Inch in last yeah. minute, so it just kept changing. It was the same label, you know. It just kept changing. Different names and titles and shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you get? Do you? Do you, can, I, do you go ahead. We're gonna say again. Oh no! Yeah, I'm, I'm listening. To you. I was gonna say, do you consider yourself like a like a hardcore hoarder? A hardcore what? Hoarder? Like, are you a hoarder kind of? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, my wife does, but it's my own shit. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm glad I did. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, really, I, I, to this point, I'm, I've got my, all my old shirts. My, oh, yeah, tons of shirts? Film. Wow. Oh, yeah. You see, oh, do you know that opening scene of The Godfathers of Hardcore? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's like those, 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 those there's like actors, whatever. They're wearing all my clothes. Holy from shit. Every, all my clothes, all those flyers up there are recreations of my flyers. It's even a recreation of my squat room. Damn. So, and even my bra- my spike braces are wearing, my boots. I mean, it's everything. You have all that you know? shit still. That's crazy, I, I man. I still do. Yeah, I still do. And and, and most importantly, I, I'm I'm really happy I, I even saved all the flyers because it's so. You know what? If it wasn't for me saving all the flyers, it helped me so much in, in, with my book mm-hmm. because I was able to like look at stuff and remember. And if I remember something, go back and oh shit, here's the flyer for it. So I've yeah, I've kind of put a lot of things in order, right? Especially with Agnostic Front, I put everything in order, like in a way. Like in order, like from day one to whatever. Yeah. I, and I and I really stopped picking up stuff. Like I think around the GBH tour, like I already had enough junk and I was moving around a lot and it was already hard enough. Cause I was keeping stuff. Yeah. Between like Stigma's house, Kabula's house, or even Dave Jones. Dave Jones had my insert for United Blood. Somehow I gave him the insert of United Blood to hold on for me, oh, and he wow. wasn't even a drummer. Damn. United Blood. So that's how. I sp- Garson spread a lot of my stuff was, you know, I had stuff in my mom's house, you know, like, and then I was just like, uh, you know, then CDs came out and everything kind of came to a pause, you know, yeah. nobody was really giving records anymore. I really liked the records. I liked everything about it. Like CDs wasn't the same thing for me. It you know? wasn't, man. <clears throat> so once that came out, I kind of lost, lost a lot of interest with anything further from there. So a lot of the base in my collection, I would say probably, uh, Till about 86 But I do have later stuff I do yeah. have stuff That's later here and there That were given to me That are, that are awesome And they're just as classic Yeah But I think the, the chunk of it Goes to about 86 And a chunk of it Is in the Tri-state area You know There's stuff everywhere Yeah Like, if, like I've I've got all the a lot, a lot of uh, the Detroit stuff. I'm probably out of all that touch and go label. The only thing I'm really missing out of the first ten will be that fixed seven inch touch and um, go. Yeah, that's good label too. Yeah, and but I've, you know, I've, of course I have negative approach first and second pressing and stuff like that. I don't really have a lot of the weird stuff that's like those weird sleeves, like colored sleeves and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, I mean, if it was really done great. It's just weird to me, you know. Anybody can color sleep and say this was dumb, whatever. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I just never was really into that far, that extreme of it. And the same with like all the stuff on Revelation. Like, if it wasn't for those guys being so close, I wouldn't have a lot of stuff. And those guys mm-hmm. being my friends. Yeah, exactly. You know, Sid giving me that. That I, I've got with even rare, and it's one of my prized possessions. I might as well mention it now. It's a cassettes. That Siv gave me, and there's only like when I showed him the picture, he goes, You still got that? I'm like, Yeah. He says there was only like, he only had, a, I don't know, like four of them only. Wow. And it was to get shows. It's like in 1985, you know, GB, like, Damn. I want to get shows. Here, Roger, here's my band. You yeah. Know, I yeah. Play. And I still got that. You that's know, crazy. That's, that's pretty freaking rare. I don't 
put that out there a lot. I don't, a lot of people haven't seen that. That's because I'm, of bootleggers and yeah. shit like that, you know? Yeah, with the Raw Deal demo was a hard one, too, to get. Yeah, I think I have that. Wow. I'm pretty sure I do. I'm pretty sure I do. Um, you know, like I said, you know, you're right there. Exactly. Being in an agnostic front, a lot of these bands, my peers, my friends, and they want to play with us. Yep. And they would, hey, Roger, check this out. It, of course. Why not? It's cool he like kept them, too. They, it's cool he like, grabbed them, actually kept them and brought them home. That's amazing. Sometimes you leave shit yeah. at the club, whatever, yeah. Oh, and there's, there's plenty of shit I, that didn't make it back and, or, yeah. or lost or whatever. Shit, I remember even going on tour with Victim and Pain on our first tour. And we're hitting places like Texas, New Mexico, Arizona. And we were unaware of the extreme heat, you know. And, <laughs> yeah. and we're staying in places for a week because shows are canceled. We don't know what to do. We're hanging out. And all those records warping. A lot of them warped under the van. They were under the van, under the bed we made, you know. Damn. And we still fucking sold them, you know. Just got a little warp. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, man. It's crazy because they're like, they're like, artifacts of like from it's crazy man just the vinyls and having that stuff is yeah. i don't know man I, but i do think my rare stuff was definitely has to be the af stuff like, i mean united blood and it's full on 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 the full recording i have that on on uh, on the reels and i have the mastering of that on the reels and i have the second press where they took the original recording and they re we put it back onto a different set of reels with a mastering of that, just to you know, because you don't want to play that very many times. Yeah. And then when the second press came out, was it was the only time there was ever any test pressings for United Blood, and there were two different test pressings. A lot of people don't know that there's a small hole and a big hole version, and there there are two different matrix numbers to to, oh, to wow. run coincide with each one of them. A lot of people don't know stuff like that, but yeah. I yeah. And I've got those test pressings too, and then you know it's just. AF to be my baby, you know? Yeah. To this date, there's only six items that I know of that are listed on Discogs. Uh, four of them being, I'm one LP away from having everything that's on Discogs. And the LP is just a, it's really weird. It's a, it, I have the regular version, but it's a um, promotional version of Live at CBGB's Australia. And Whoa. what's cool about that, what that it was that, that was we were on CBS. Oh Did shit! You believe that? No, what, <laughs> what, what that. Over, over there? You mean in Australia? We Damn! Were, if you pick up the live of CBGB's Australia version, it's, a, it's on CBS. It That's... was like a I call it our our Clash tribute record because the Clash was on CBS, you know. Oh shit! That's so, awesome. And it's but I have the regular version, but I don't have the promotional version. And for the seven inch, there's just one lathe cut version that I don't have, which is. They only made like 50 lathes. I mean, this is ridiculous. These bootleggers, they send me one. Send me one. Yeah. They're ready to make you the money. Send me one. That's crazy. Other than that, there's a couple cassettes I don't have. One of them is a cassette that there's like four cassettes, and one of them is a cassette with H2O and Agnostic, and Agnostic Front. Really? So maybe you have it. Yeah, one cassette. What the fuck is that? It's, oh, it's from. Epitaph? It's, yeah. That's the only oh. one of the cassettes I'm missing. Let me look for that. I might have cassettes here, actually. Those little samplers, like. I'll s- yeah, yeah, I'll send you a photo of it. Okay. I don't have, I know it's, it's listed, but you know, the, the harder thing now about it too is the stuff that's listed on Discogs in the last year and a half, two years, they've put a ban on bootleg stuff, which, which is kind of cool because you know, it's not cool that people sell all that stuff. And, and, and you know, the, the, obviously the bands are getting, and some of the stuff I almost understand, like who the hell wants to pay, for, you know, like so much money for like Misfits records or yeah. even some of the AF record, but some of the AF record were were officially released with, on Bridge Nine Affordable, so there's no need for that. Yeah, I remember those. You know, but before that, when you couldn't get United Blood, you know, there were two or three bootlegs made out there, and eh, I, maybe I can understand that. Yeah, who wants to pay so much money for? Same with some of the Misfits Seven Inches. Who the hell wants to pay five thousand dollars for Cough Cool? It's crazy. You know, people do. That. People, I know it's crazy that people do that though. Okay. Yeah. But, but you know you can't blame them. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's just not fair to the bands. And I'm not gonna go on a, tra- uh, tra- a rampage and all this. But you know, yeah. it kind of does suck. Bootlegging is, even though I've always said get it by all means necessary. But <laughs> hey, send me a copy. I'm asking you to send me a copy. I'm not asking you for anything else. What about um? What about etching? Like, did you ever write stuff on your? You guys, is there stuff etched into your vinyl like they did back then? Like writing stuff on the vinyl? You know. We, you know, we never did. We just, mm. 
we never had any little messages or nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not till not till lately, the repress of United Blood, which I took it, I took it to very personal. I did, I hand stamped each and every one of those eight hundred of them, Holy and shit. I made different colors. I made it like a like a like a negative approach version of red label, black label. I, I did all. I took all my collecting stuff from all the years that I loved. Yeah, and I recreated it into a lot of this stuff, like the the that really rare fifteen. Uh, 15 only uh, three pack set they're Damn. done like with a five eighths fold like yeah like your uh your your necro sex drive you know like mm-hmm. style like that with a gold foil stamp you know just i took yeah. i really wanted to do this really nice and really right and in the in those versions i etched out one of them says stigma with a bunch of explanation points nice. I what one said. <laughs> but other than that no we did make some flyers back then with some hidden little things in them i'll show you whenever you come to my wow. house as so you'll laugh at yeah i'm gonna come to your house see this second like museum and shit it's crazy yeah you'll laugh at some of the stuff you're like no way you know because people didn't catch it oh on the but, flyers you know, oh shit yeah 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 there's just some funny stuff here and there yeah um but nothing crazy you know we we just really want back then we just wanted to play and have fun go out there and it was awesome to meet all these bands that like I remember, like playing in Oklahoma. Was it o- Oklahoma? Is that is that right? I don't know where NOTA is from. Okay. Um, and, and it was so, and, and you know, so great to play with bands that I used to pick up their sevens and listen to them. You know, yeah. and it's just it was just amazing. Like one of my favorite bands. I love the Fuck Ups. I really do. Oh, the Fuck Ups, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love yeah. them from San Francisco, and I. I've got all the versions, and most, mostly because it was they gave it to me, you know. Yeah. And they were friends of mine, and and I, I just love certain bands. I really like. Wow, these are cool bands. I mean, just I don't know. I just gravitated yeah. to yeah to what I like. I tend to like a lot of the I li- like I like bad pizza. I won't admit it. <laughs> bad pizza. So I, yeah, I like bad punk rock and bad pizza. That's what <laughs> that's one of my things. But it's not bad. It's just really good. Yeah. And it. In a different way, it's just really good, you know. It's just like, for example, one of my all-time ever favorite records, and I used to always say this. I know some became really popular. I guess I should keep my mouth shut with some of this stuff. It was a band from New York called Mark Truth and the Liars. Mark Truth and the Liars. Yes, and uh, loved watching them. There was everybody hated them. Mark played almost everything. Would come in. And just at every eighty-seven show, and just kind of insert himself into the sh- into the shows, and he was crazy. <laughs> He'd take off his clothes. He was nuts. <laughs> and I remember all the girls yelling "sexist" and all this crazy stuff. But he was just a chaotic nut job, you know. He wow. Had a big, uh, he had a song that never came out on record, which I love, called "Subway Man." Hopefully, someday somebody will find it, oh, record shit. it somewhere. Who knows? Damn. But I loved it. And then you know, I've been talking about Mark Truth and Elias for years. When people ask me what was my favorite New York band one of my favorite New York punk bands. And now it's just a really rare record, hard to find. Unfortunate for me, I do have a, that with in, with everything, sleeve and all. Oh, Most wow. Most of the time you find it without a sleeve. But it's just, there's a lot of really cool, what, what, you, when people listen to them, they're like, what the hell? What do you mean this is one of your favorite bands? Well, I like bad pizza and bad punk rock. Can I tell you? <laughs> to me, the attitudes will count it, you know? Yeah. Those guys only yeah, had one record? Balls, yeah. Wow. yeah, he had the balls to do that shit, and this is before Gigi Allen was doing. I was gonna say that, right, or yeah. kind of right in the beginning, or kind of right in the start. Gigi Allen had a phenomenal record before all that. Speaking really? Of Gigi Allen. Oh fuck yeah! You ever hear it? No, before <laughs> before like the craziness. You mean like before, before like before sh- all the art shock values, crazy yeah. stuff. Phenomenal punk record. Wow. Um, what the fuck is it called? You don't have it's it. It's him with the jobs, I think. I don't have it. Unfortunately, I don't. And, and it's a and it's a price of record. It's over a thousand dollars if you can oh, find shit. it. Oh shit! But I'll send you the. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Um, it's phenomenal. You'd be like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> it's, it's it's a classic, like great, like punk album. So, you know? Yeah. And so that before he came to GGI with all the antics and the crazy shit and the nakedness stuff, there's a record he put out before that. Before he went, yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Wow. It, it was. I'm gonna tell you the name right now because I got it right over here. Did you ever see Gigi Allen perform? Oh yeah, that was a trip, <laughs> a trip. It's funny because I would talk with him and he was always always cool when on the regular and suddenly he start you know, 
and then, you know, he was rowdy. He was crazy. And he'd pop his pills, his poop pills every time before. I remember that. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and then it would become a, a, a shit show. Like, like, yeah, no pun intended. Yeah. yeah. But I remember one of the last, second to last times I saw him play was at the Cat Club in New York City. And I was just hanging out right before, like a couple hours before. And here he comes back in. He's ready, kind of ready to play. Already had taken his his um, pill, his, his pills to, to shit, you know, whatever. Yeah. And was bombed out of his mind, and he just started shitting everywhere like usual. Cut himself up with the bottle, bottles everywhere. Then he started picking up his shit and throwing it at everybody. Jesus. And then the whole place stunk like shit, of course. And I'm gonna, I'm lucky. I'm in a fucking court crazy and I'm on the side. I'm nowhere near this crazy shit. I know better than standing in front of him. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah. I'm watching and I'm watching them the, the bouncers trying to get him out of it because the club wanted him out at that point. Of course. Like, get him out, get him out. And they had like the big cues to the big pool sticks and they're trying to get him out. There were nobody would go near him. Nobody would want to touch him. <laughs> bleeding full of shit. <laughs> He's fucking trying to fight everybody. Then I saw another show which was even crazy, Toby. Um, am I a lot of curses? Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, this one show uh, it was at, remember that place on, on Avenue A? Gas station? Kim, Kim's. No. Kim's, they, they used to do video, deep videos, VHS. Yeah, Kim's, re- re- yeah. Yeah, and then they started doing shows there. I didn't know they did shows there. Wow. Kim's video, yeah. I remember that. So, that was the last time I saw Gigi Allen. So I, I'm like, all right, let, you know, we go say hi, you know, yeah. blah, 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 whatever. And I go down there and he's fucking playing and there's a guy and a girl up front, like right front stage, you know. And he just drops his pants, and and the guy just starts having oral sex on him, right? What? And, and the girl's mad at the guy. She's punching him. She's hitting him. You know, like it's crazy while he's playing. <laughs> Holy shit! This girlfriend was mad at him for in doing a, what he was doing in a like, video store. Like, oh you, you, shit! You, you can't even. The shit he did was. I mean, if you had a camera back then, you couldn't get away with this shit. No, no way. But he definitely. The shock value was there. The name of that record was uh that, that first album, which is amazing. Uh, came out in 1980. Was called "Always Was, Is, and Always Shall Be." Oh wow! Okay. Phenomenal. Just look it up. Okay, it's a great record. Holy shit! I mean, I don't even th- I don't even think about G.G. Allen's music when you think about it. we think about all the antics and the the nakedness and all yeah. that. Yeah, you know the what I mean? Like, stuff, yeah, which was well, he became more famous for, of course. Yeah, but prior to that, he wrote some great, great, really great songs. He really did. Wow. I'm not saying none of the stuff that he did with that. With the shock stuff wasn't good either. I, I like some of that stuff too. Murder junkies. But it was just yeah, yeah, yeah. You you just had to you know he had to know better than and, and know what to expect and stay away. <laughs> yeah. Amazing, awesome, Roger. Roger, what, what are you working on now? You want to talk about what you're working on now? Well, I'm working on on a I'm working on a new book. Basically, some kind of a. More speaking of which, which because we spoke about this today, yeah, it's more uh, f- related with photos and imagery. It's kind of like I told you in the last time we spoke that I kept a diary of our first tour. Yeah, so it'll be like like exports of the diary with a flyer from the show, maybe some photos of the show if I could find them somehow. But it's basically my collection, so it's not I love like that. not import stuff from anyone else. So if I don't have it, I don't have it. I guess. Yeah, but I've. I've I, for some reason, I'm just short two flyers of our first tour. Somehow, I don't have it. I don't know why. Maybe it'll, maybe they'll pop up in some other batch or somewhere. Yeah. But it's like it's a lot of imagery, like from the very beginning. Yeah. I'm actually starting with, with probably I like to start with some of the eliminator stuff because I have a bunch of eliminator stuff. Vinny's first band before Agnostic Front. Yeah. Start with some of that imagery into some of the early Agnostic Front shows before I was even in the band, but I've kept the flyers. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Memories and there's this photos and stuff, awesome. and then going into Agnostic Front, the, you know, United Blood era, Victim and Pain era, that first tour, it will guide you through, you know, yeah, that first tour into the GBH tour, and it's gonna be a lot of imagery from awesome. like a lot of the stuff. Emily took, um, um, I'm sorry, Amy took some amazing photos back then too and she sure and uh, she's got like thousands of beautiful photos so it's gonna be a lot of, a lot of those images are also in the godfathers of hardcore that's yeah film so hopefully some into intertwine some of that intertwine some of the randy's photos because he was there from the very beginning yeah and who to who randy was a photographer who did our photos on, on united blood and maybe some jessica 
photos for sure. Some of Jessica's photos, because I have to include the the victim of pain photo, you know. Yeah. So some of the people that were with me kind of incorporated in this journey, but I wanted to be of like a beautiful image, like imagery book, like a coffee coffee table. table. Yeah, I was gonna say that. Yeah. Some, something you could look at and like, wow, like a collections. Book, That's like, cool. Yeah. You know? The Beastie Boys just did that. They have like all these this new book, and for every story they told, there was a photo to go with it. It's really awesome, man. The way they did that oh, too. Oh, cool. Yeah, I haven't seen that. You know, one thing one thing that was really tough for me, too, is there's a lot of cool books out there and stuff like when I was writing my book, um, I didn't want to read anybody else's book because I didn't want to. Yeah. Kind of get a story from someone else kind of into my head. And I, you know, I kind of I didn't bother. I, I just want to be locked in my own zone. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I didn't pick up anything related musically or nothing. So I could just focus into my own. zone. So there's some books I still have to catch up on reading. Yeah. And, you know, but um, I thought that was, I just, you know, I just wanted to make sure it was all my, my story, my vision, my stuff. One of the really coolest thing about that, Toby, is after I did get the book done, I, I sent stuff over to Amy because, you know, I wanted her to read to make yeah. sure, you know, because she's the mother of my child, too. Yeah. She, plus, she was, she was an important figure in my life. For you sure. Know? And she was, uh, you know, a, a point, it was a point where we were in love and we, we had our child. and. Mm-hmm. And all that stuff. So I wanted to make sure, you know, it was, you know, things were right. And it, it's funny, her message, which I, I still kept and I still have, of course, all, all of them anyway, was it's was her first thing she said was funny. You remember things different. We remember things differently. Mm. And it's true. And I realized right there and then it's like my mem- me and you could be at a show. Yeah. We could just say that show from 1996, whatever. Yeah. Or 98, we did together, whatever it was. And we remember different things from that show. Exactly. You know? Or yeah. we'll, we'll remember a different part of a of us of like the same person could be in front of us. We'll remember something completely different. Yeah. Which is really cool. And then she started talking about her memories, which I asked if I could incorporate into my book. She said, "Of course." And it was really cool. She 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 bought like a different perspective. Vision into some yeah, yeah, perspective yeah. That, yeah. That I, it added a little bit of color to my to my edges, you know. Which yeah, was I love really that. Cool. So that's so, awesome. You know, so so. Oh, oh, yeah, exactly. So it was it was cool, and then so that's the last thing I'm working on right now is that book, and um, I'm gonna, I'm having fun doing it because this is more of a fun project because I am going through all my old flyers. There's so many memories and shit come up, and it's like yeah. almost therapeutic, like going through all this shit. I, I think it's awesome. It it really is, man. It really is. It's it's fun. And you put all your shit out there, man. You wear your heart on your sleeve, and and uh, your whole life is out there now, especially with the doc, with the with the movie and stuff. Like, and your first book, My Riot, is like it's just. Now it's everything's out there. It's it's awesome. Yeah, I mean, as much as, as much as I want, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you got a story or two that never made it to that book that I told you. Oh, for sure. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, for it's sure. just there's a time and a place, and yeah, and whatever was happening at the time and that place where I, while I was in the middle of that book is what's there. Yeah, yeah. But, I love and that. you know what else too? There's 21 pages that didn't make it to the book. That oh were, wow. That were edited out. Like I we went through three editors, and Holy they just shit. wanted to streamline it to be like more intense, and people would read it through in like two, three days, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, yeah. So it was like twenty-one things, pages missing of material that oh, I could shit. always use somewhere. somewhere yeah, somewhere else. Yeah. Speaking Wait. of collections, too, I like to add that one quickly. I'm sorry. Okay. Is that one of my one of my a lot of my prize stuff is, is stuff that I got from Rabies. Mm. Uh, one, one of my one of my prize. Well, my prize seven inch United Blood is is um, there was a there was a time where while we were putting together the United Blood seven inches to, you know to to sell them whatever Ray Breeze wasn't even in the band at that time, but he came over to help us put it together because he was proud to be in it you know yeah to, to record it yeah and, uh, there were a couple that were the labels were offset so we're like oh it looks like shit you, they still play you can play where it goes right to the paper you know you hear the whole damn pfft side yeah and we wrote a personal message to each other i think i think you posted it somewhere i think i seen yeah this. i posted the one that he wrote for me yeah. i wrote one for him but that one i've never seen again so who knows what wow just got lost in the mix and that's you know amazing. stuff like that yeah and that's when really rabies pa- yeah when rabies passed i got all of his uh all of his stuff his personal war zone stuff his personal copies oh wow of of uh, all his seven inches, you know, and oh, and, and don't forget to struggle for his street. I also got one of his personal uh, peas. Uh, most importantly, I got, well, 
besides all that, I got his boots that are hanging up on uh, Neil Carver tattoos. Yeah, I seen that. I seen that though. Yeah. Yeah. Those those lived in my van for for over like a year and a half. We used to tour with them all the time. We would always take rabies with us. Me and Vinny. Oh, you got wow. rabies? I mean, yeah, got them. And he was just and behind my seat. Those boots are always there the whole time. That's and then when they open amazing. up Neil Carver tattoos, Vinny's like, "Can I just get it for the shop?" I'm like, "Of course." It's just in the back of my van, and we we take him on tour. He might as well have it home now. Damn. And it was like, it was pretty. That's pretty cool, amazing, you know? man. Yeah. Like a lot of people didn't know that. I got, and thank thank God nobody ever broke into the van and took the boots because I yeah. lost. Yeah. Yeah. That's so but, cool. Uh, you got those too. That's amazing, man. Yeah. All memories so, there and like. Hang so up that's the boots. some of my favorite stuff, I guess. There's, yeah, there's man. probably a lot of other memories. I just can't remember. Yeah, you should open a museum. You should have like a museum someday or something. Yeah, I've, you know, there's been talk of me doing a couple, bringing a couple things here and there. Yeah, like an maybe, art, yeah, all your, like your collection, like your collection. That'd be sick. Yeah. Well, the thing is, you get scared of taking it out here and there. Too, yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, unless I'm with it, I ain't going. I, 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 think, I, I think, I think, we, I think we know some people that could make sure nobody fucks with that and protects it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and have his own security at the art show and shit. Just your stuff on the wall would be oh. awesome. Of course, but well, maybe I will when that book comes out. Maybe I'll bring some stuff out so people can see. I think that'd be all. I think people would love that. I think you appreciate it and get to see all that stuff, man. It's like, I know, I know it's your personal shit, but like people, like it'd be pretty awesome to see that. You know, what I mean? your whole collections, very your shirts, all that stuff. Be awesome. Yeah, and, and what's really cool is that connection when you see those old photos and you see that shirt, and I still have that shirt. I'm like, hey, this that's this shirt. That's that's that, that spike bracelet. Dude. Look, I'm wearing those boots. You know, it's really really weird. You know, it's crazy for all, all the it's moving really you did and the good. traveling you did, and like yeah. the fire and the squats, and the, you you maintain keeping all that shit, man. It's fucking. It's crazy. It was all. It was a, in a bunch of trunks, and there's a story where uh, it's a funny story, but I might as well tell you. So, uh, uh, years ago, um, it was like three trunks, and Amy had her, her sister's place, and she kept it in the attic. And then I was like, "Hey, you know, I want to get my stuff." She's like, "Oh, it all it all flooded. It was a bad flood." I'm, the whole time I'm like, "How could there be a flood in an attic?" You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't want to bother anymore. You know, like it was just it wasn't the time. Yeah. And about three years ago. Amy hit me up and said, hey, I got your stuff. I'm like, oh, I thought I thought it was, you know, it was awesome. And she goes, well, I, I thought so too, but it ended up not being. So I went and picked it up, and it was a lot of that stuff was a lot, in that in that trunk where the taste for United Blood. Wow. In that trunk where, where the, the the test pressings and stuffed all the really old shit that could have, yeah, that could have flooded. Who knows? Yeah. In that Holy trunk were all my old, my original victim of pain t-shirt, red, white, and blue when I wore them, victim of pain. In that trunk were, you know, it, 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 there was so much stuff. It was just it was like, like a treasure chest. Shit. A yeah. treasure chest. Yeah. And thankfully, you know, thankfully she still had it. But, that's know, I thought it was gone. I dude, that's amazing, gone. man. Fuck, man. So much, so much history, man. So much history that you lived and survived. And it's pretty awesome, man. And now you're sharing well, it with all of us. So. Yeah, thank you, and I'm happy to be alive. I'll tell you that much more. <laughs> For sure, I'm happy you're alive too. I'm, yeah, I'm glad. I'm happy to call you a friend, and a lot of other my brother. friends are still with me. You know. Yeah. And there's a lot of good people out there. I've got a lot of good hearts. A lot of good people, and that's that's who I try to associate myself with and and stay in touch with. I don't need no negativity in my life anymore. Me either. Dude. I don't. I don't need it. I don't choose. It, I don't want it. Yeah. And if you don't bring it upon you, it'll, it won't come to you. It'll just go away. I agree, man. I want to surround myself with people that that care about me and I care about. Yeah. I'm tired. I'm getting too old for this stuff. Yeah, man. You've been through all you've been through a lot, man. And uh it's only it's you you deserve that. You have a beautiful, awesome family and yeah, I mean we get to do what we love and yeah, fuck man. We're very we're very lucky, man, for sure. Thank you, brother. Well, thank you for your time. And this is gonna be the best episode. I'm fucking psyched. Very thorough, so many stories, so many facts, and I appreciate it, Roger so much. Thank you, man. Thank you. I always have fun talking to you. So, if you get bored, give me a call again. I will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Raj. This is awesome. All right, brother. Love you. Love you too. Bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for listening. Um, please rate, review, uh, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet to this podcast, please do that. And whatever platform you are listening to this on, I'm glad you found me. You can rate me and review me on there also. So, thank you guys sincerely for the support. I cannot wait for you guys to hear the next one.